Hello and welcome to Matrix Live. This week we are going to use Python to call Synapse's admin API. We are going to use it to finish our OIDC tutorial, but the instructions should be generic enough for you to use in a different context too. We are going to call the admin API to pull Synapse user data, reconcile them with the SSO we had deployed in the first part of the OIDC tutorial, and push the reconciled data back into Synapse. I'm going to leave a link to the first part of the tutorial in the description in case you want to rewatch it. We had deployed a Synapse instance, a SSO provider called Authentic, and we had populated accounts both on Synapse and Authentic. One account has the same email and username on both systems. One account has the same email but a different username on Synapse and Authentic. One account only exists in Authentic. One account only exists in Synapse. Let's get started and pull the data from Synapse. We need two things to be able to ask the server to give us the data we need. We need to know where the server lives, in other words, we need to know its hostname. We need to prove we are authorized to get the data. If you use delegation of incoming federation traffic, you need to rely on Synapse's delegated hostname, not on your home server's hostname. That sounds complicated, it's not really in practice. Let's take an example. If the server part of my matrix ID is chipchop.org, but my synapse is hosted at matrix.chipchop.org, then I need to perform the API calls against matrix.chipchop.org. A good way to find where synapse is hosted is to look up the home server's domain slash dot well dash known slash matrix slash server, and you should get a JSON object with a, a domain. So this domain is your delegated hostname against which you need to do the API calls. As for the token, it's fairly simple. You need to be authenticated in Element with an admin account. Then you click on your profile, all settings, help and about, scroll to bottom, expand the access token part, and that's it. You have the access token here. So first, let's look at the documentation. Looking up Synapse admin API yields pretty good results on Google. What we want is to list all users. So we are going to the users section of the admin API and we can see there is an API to list accounts. That's perfect. Let's start a brand new Python project. Poetry is my personal favorite to bootstrap a Python project and manage dependencies. I also like to get the virtual environment to be created in my project repository since it makes it very easy to use by VS Code. Off the top of my head, PyCharm supports the default location for virtual, for virtual environments generated by Poetry, but I quite like VS Code and I'm lazy. So I'm changing the Poetry setting first with Poetry config, virtual environment in project true, which is going to change the setting. And then I can create a new project called reconciliation with Poetry new reconciliation which is going to create the reconciliation folder. And I can add the dependencies requests with poetry, add requests, which is going to fetch and install the dependencies in the virtual environment it created in the folder. And now we can open the project in VS Code. So for the sake of brevity, I have already created a dump synapse file in which I import requests. I have created two variables, host and access token, which contain the host and the access token I have retrieved previously, and a third one called headers, uh, which I use simply to have the access to send the access token to Synapse when I perform requests, so I am authenticated. Then I perform a get request on the host. I'm just using the same, the very same um, endpoint as I have in the documentation the Synapse admin API user endpoint to list all the users. And I have only changed the limit to artificially create pagination because I don't have enough users in my example to create pagination. So I just limited it to two instead of 10 uh, to create pagination. And then I'm asking Python to just print the JSON object I'm being returned. So I'm using my terminal and I'm going to ask it to dump the users. I am returned a JSON object and it has the exact same format as in the documentation. I can see I have an array of users. I've got the users here. 
I've got uh, the total number of users and the next token. So next token is what I'm going to use to fetch the next page. So now I can, I'm going to use some magic to add some code to uh, add the pagination uh, loop. So we now have a full loop that is iterating on all the users I got for each page and retrieving the details from those users. And then I'm just adding their matrix ID and their email to the result, uh, to the global result I'm returning. I'm just using a little helper function I wrote, uh, get mail, which is something a little dirty, but just enough for the sake of the demonstration. It's a little helper function I wrote to get the email from the user object I'm being returned. Note that it's not necessarily entirely correct because it's just going to return the first email address it received and not necessarily the correct one. If the user has several email addresses, it's just going to stop at the first. So if I run Python um, synapse again, it's going to return me an array of dictionaries. So I'm going to have the matrix ID and the email for each user. Now, having that printed in a terminal is not necessarily the best way to handle it. So I'm going to dump that in a CSV file. So I have created a CSV writer that is just going to write the dictionary to a file called Synapse and is going to write the MX ID and email fields uh, to the CSV. So if I'm running the file with Python dump Synapse, it should take a second or two and then you can see the synapse.csv file it has created with the MX ID and email. You can see a few super admin on that instance that probably should not be there, but I have created them. So, so it's not a bug from the script. It's just me being a terrible admin. So I have a CSV file with all the information I care about my users. Now I can do the same for the authentic side. So to retrieve the user ID and email, from the side of authentic and then I can create my reconciliation file and push this data to Synapse. So I have put the data I have dumped from Synapse and authentic in a spreadsheet. I have uh, one tab for Synapse, one for authentic with the data of the various users and one with the reconciled data. So it's very simple. In the reconciled one, I just pasted the matrix ID in Synapse because I just want to do the reconciliation for users already existing in Synapse. If you have a close look, uh, you can say in authentic, I have Miss Jemison, who does not exist in Synapse. So she is not in the reconciled tab because next time she authenticates using the SSO, Synapse is going to create an account for her. So she is outside of the reconciliation. Um, now, the interesting bit is that I took the matrix ID, the email, and I matched the UID uh, that exists in authentic to be able to bind that in Synapse. One interesting thing is for Mr. Asimov. So I used a VLOOKUP. Excel purists might be offended by that, but it, ju it works just fine. Uh, so for Mr. Asimov, I don't have a UID. So this is something that should worry you if you are running a company and you have a central identity system and in your target, which is Synapse, there is somebody who exists, but who does not exist in your central identity repository. Uh, we are not going to cover this case because it's, it's, it just depends on what you want to do. If I were to run a company in, in this situation, I would reach out uh, to Mr. Asimov and to the CISO to inform them that there is something very critical that somebody has access to our to our end-to-end -end encrypted conversation and we don't know who they are. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to remove them from the data and I'm going to write a little script that reads this and who is performing the reconciliation in Synapse. Let's see in the documentation how to do that. So there is an API to create or modify an account. And this is precisely what we want to do. We want to modify an account. So it's the endpoint Synapse admin v2 users and user ID, which is the matrix ID and a body, which is quite long and complex. But if we scroll down a little, we can see that the, the body parameters, all of them actually are completely optional. So we can modify only a little thing, what we are interested in for the users. And in our case, what we are interested in modifying is the external IDs. The external IDs is 
a concept in Synapse that allows you to say, my user is also known as this identity in this provider. So in our case, the auth provider is going to be authentic and the external ID is going to be the um, UID that we have just reconciled in the Excel file. There is a little catch though. Uh, the auth provider is going to be as defined in the OIDC provider section. So if we scroll down a little to have an example of documentation um, of configuration. So this is a section of Synapse configuration, uh, the OIDC providers one. And the, uh, the auth provider um, ID is going to be the IDP ID, except in the case of Synapse, when you add an OIDC provider, the IDP ID is going to be prepended with OIDC dash. So if you use the playbook, um, the, the OIDC playground playbook, the IDP is called authentic. So in our case, we need the auth provider to be OIDC dash authentic. And the external ID is going to be the UID provided by authentic. Let's write the script to push this information in Synapse. So I've got all the data reconciled in, in that CSV file called reconcile.csv. Um, so basically two lines and two columns in the matrix ID and the UID ones. And I can write a little script uh, called push reconciliation, which is very simple, in which I read the CSV and I craft the body as the documentation requires it. And then I can do a little put um, on the endpoint with the matrix ID of the user and the UID read from the file. And if I do the Python push reconciliation, it's going to push the request and that's it. Finally, we can test it with authentic. So I'm authenticated as the administrator on authentic and I can go to the admin interface. Uh, then I can browse the directory of users and then I can impersonate, for example, uh, Mr. Baxter. So I'm going to click on impersonate and open a new tab. Then I'm going to go to app.element.io and I'm going to click on sign in. And I don't want to sign into matrix.org, but to cheap chop.org, my home server, and it's offering me to continue with my company. So my company is the display name uh, that is in the um, configuration of Synapse for, for this provider. So I'm authenticated on authentic as uh, Mr. Baxter. So it's going to redirect me to Synapse. I'm going to click on continue. And I can see that it's trying to authenticate me as Mr. Baxter. So this one is, is easy because I've got the same um, username on Synapse and Authentic, but I can stop the impersonation here. And I can get back to the admin interface and try with another user, Mr. Adams, for example. Um, so on Authentic, I'm D Adams. And on Element, on Synapse, I used to be, I was Doug. So let's see how it's, goes, I go to chipchop.org again. I continue with my company. This time I'm authenticated as D Adams. And if I click on continue, Synapse loads a little and it made the link with my account, which is Doug. And if I click on continue, Element is going to load and I'm going to have uh, to log into my account and I indeed am Doug. So that concludes this episode on reconciliation. I hope you found it useful, whether it is to reconcile user accounts uh, with OIDC or just to know how to make API calls uh, to the admin API. See you around.